Hey guys, uh, you know in all my time in doing YouTube videos, I've always tried to shy away from talking about bad experiences that I've had with companies. Uh, you know, I like to give people the opportunity to make things right. Uh, unfortunately tonight I'm going to be uh, deviating from that a little bit. Uh, not really to talk about the bad experience so much, but just because I think the solution that I'm going to come up with is a little bit interesting. It's worth setting a uh, camera up for and recording. So, uh, what I've got here is a can launcher from X Products. Uh, X Products makes this AR upper and a couple of different tubes here. This one's for launching soda cans. Uh, they make a smaller one for launching golf balls. And uh, basically it just comes as a stripped upper and you put your own bolt carrier group and your own AR lower on this. Uh, I machined my own lower for it and uh, put a new bolt carrier group in. I bought this thing about a month ago, uh, took it to a rock quarry and put a blank in here and tried to fire it. And I just heard a click, figured it was a bad blank. So I put another blank in and then a third one, same thing, click on all of them. I looked at the primers and I could see that there was just barely a tiny dimple in the primer. The firing pin was not making, uh, you know, didn't have adequate depth uh, penetration into the primer to actually set it off. So since this was a new lower and a new bolt carrier group, I assumed that the fault must be there. Uh, fortunately, I had four other ARs with me at, uh, at that day when I was out shooting and, and they were all known good ones. I mean, I, I fired several rounds through all of those. And so I swapped the lowers and bolt carrier groups out of those, uh, all four of them, uh, onto this upper, and none of them would fire the blanks through here. And then I thought, hey, maybe there's a problem with the blanks. So I took some of the blanks that I had already tried to fire in this and uh, put them in the other ARs, the, the regular ARs, and they fired the blanks just fine. So the problem was obviously with the upper in, on this thing. Now, I did try and contact X Products. Uh, over the last two weeks, I've sent them several emails. I've left several voicemails. Didn't hear anything back from them. You know, it's frustrating. I've never been able to fire a single round through this thing, and there's clearly a problem with the upper. You know, I feel like it's something they should make right, but uh, I can't even talk to them, so sounds like uh, I, I'm on my own for fixing this. That's what we're going to do tonight. I know there's a little bit of talk in here, but I'm going to explain. I've already taken a few minutes to look at this. I already think I know what the problem is, and I'm going to take a few minutes to explain it to you. So for those that don't know how the uh, the system works in an AR. This right here is the hammer. When you pull the trigger, the hammer pops forward and strikes the firing pin. The firing pin's in the bolt carrier group here, and that basically pokes the primer in the back of the, the cartridge and sets it off. Um, I first noticed when I first built this that the bolt on this actually sits below, it sits, uh, recessed from this surface right here. Now on all my other ARs, the bolt is either flush or maybe even a little bit proud of the surface, and it actually rubs on the buffer here when you, uh, when you put the upper onto the lower. Uh, not on this gun, there's just no interference right there at all. And like I said, it sits, I've actually measured it, it sits 30, 30 thousandths down inside of this surface here. Uh, I'm not a gunsmith uh, or a machinist. I'm sure there's someone out there that can tell me that there's a spec for this, uh, but, I'm certain that that's the problem, because if you move this bolt forward, you're moving the firing pin away from this hammer right here, and the hammer's just not going to make the firing pin travel as far forward. That's really all there is to it. So what limits the forward travel of the bolt is the breech up here. Um, it's a custom piece that X Products machines, and you know, I, th I think it's just machined to set that bolt too far forward. I, I, I just don't see that there could be any other... Um, you know, any, any other problem that would cause that bolt to sit too far forward and limit the travel of the, uh, of the firing pin. Now there's a few solutions. Uh, they do make extended length firing pins. I think they make them uh, like 15 thousandths of an inch longer. That may make it work. That's really not the problem. I could also get a, uh, you know, a heavier uh, hammer spring as well. Uh, that may strike the, the firing pin with enough force to actually set off the, the round. I don't know, but again, that's not the problem either. This is the custom piece that X Products makes. The uh, cartridge actually sits inside of this hole right here, um, and it's, it's uh, latched in the back of this bolt. And what uh, limits the bolt's ability to travel forward is this depth of this hole right here. Um, it sits in here. So really what I have to do is I have to move this assembly back just a bit. If, if I'm correct in thinking that the uh, back of the bolt needs to be flush with the, uh, 
with the back of the upper, then what I need to do is take 30 thousandths of an inch off of this shoulder right here. There is plenty of material here, and you know the gas from the, the cartridge going off is actually expelled out of these holes. There really isn't a whole lot of pressure on this shoulder here. Uh, 30 thousandths of an inch is not very much, um, and so I'm not really too concerned about taking that off of here. The other option, that, you know, the other way that I can add, uh, you know, move this back closer to the bolt is to take a little bit off of this surface right here. But uh, again, that kind of that modifies this upper. I'd rather just do it off of this right here. So let's chuck this thing up in the lathe and uh, uh, take our thickness off of here and then put a new blank and see if we've solved the problem. So the thickness of this right now is about uh, 0 0.150, so 150 thousandths. So we're going to take 30 thousandths off, so we should end up right about there, about 120 thousandths. Okay, perfect. All right, let's put this thing in the can cannon, load up a blank and see if we've got her fixed. Okay, I'm out here in a good safe spot to go uh, send some golf balls and uh, soda cans downrange. Um, I forgot to point out when I was first talking about this, I was using the blanks that were supplied by X products. So this was not a an ammunition related issue. Besides that, they work fine in all my other ARs. Um, anyway, someone's gonna bring that up, so. I was using high quality M200 blanks. So I brought a few blanks with me and I brought a few things to uh, launch out of the can cannon. I meant to stop and get some seltzer water. So in case I blow a can up, I don't have stickiness all over the place, but I forgot to do that. So we're gonna yeet a can of Mountain Dew into the hillside over there, uh, if this works properly, and then I'll, I'll go pick it up. Brought a couple golf balls, and then I also 3D printed these mortars here. Uh, I've got this uh, large one for the large tube. And then I did this small one right here for the smaller tube, and I 3D printed some uh, whistles into the side of them. So if this works out, we'll be sending, uh, sending some whistling mortars up in the air as well. So I actually used biodegradable plastic. That way, if I lose these things, I'm not really littering. This stuff will just deteriorate away. So I also custom 3D printed some uh, weaver rail sights for this thing. Check it out. All right, first up's a golf ball. I already got the small um, small tube on, on here. All right, let's see what we get. Whoa. All right, one golf ball down range, worked perfect. All right, next up, we're gonna try our uh, smaller mortar here really sure how this thing's gonna work. I think I'm gonna send it down the road there. I'll be able to find it a little bit easier. All right, sounds like it's down at the bottom. Let me turn the camera here so we're facing down the road. All right, let's see what we get. Oh, I see it. Actually worked pretty good, but unfortunately, no whistle. Okay, one golf ball and one small mortar launched, both successfully. I'm going to switch to a larger tube here. We're going to launch our plastic mortar first, and then we'll try sending a can downrange. All 
All right. I'm gonna try and lob this one up just a little bit more. All right. Let's see what we get here. It landed in almost exactly the same place. Okay, we're gonna send this Mountain Dew can right down this road here. To be honest with you, I don't have uh, high hopes for this staying in one piece, but hopefully we're not gonna have a big mess to clean up. So here goes nothing. There we go. All right, well that actually worked pretty good. Um, yeah, I don't have a mess to clean up. The can stayed in one piece, at least until it hit the ground. Um, man, that actually had some kick to it. You know, when I was firing the mortars and stuff, those things are pretty light, so they're not a whole lot of mass you're sending out of here, but that can, wow, that actually had some real oomph to it. Um, yeah, but it seems like we've fixed the problem, but uh, just by machining down on that collar. I mean, um, the first blank that I fired was uh, one that came from X Products. Then I had some old military M200 blanks that I'd bought off a gun broker, and that was the rest of what I fired today. So. Um, I didn't get them all on camera, but I put maybe 20 through here. So 100% reliability now. So anyway, there we go. Um, set up. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, stay tuned. I've got some more CNC videos planned for the shop, and I've, I've got a couple more range videos planned as well. I'm building a couple more ARs, so I um, might do a little bit more target shooting videos as well. So, All right, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.